All right, well, welcome to the webinar for Tuesday. Uh, we're going to go through the order flow here uh, and um, just go through some of the details, what Bookmap is showing you. Uh, and um, I want to cover today the uh, the correlation tracker as well. So uh, we'll go into some details with that. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, you become a member and you'll have access to the free resources uh, and you can reach us uh, at support at bookmap.com. Okay, so uh, let me show you where you can find Bookmap uh, first uh, because there is a free trial. So uh, click on explore when you get to bookmap.com uh, and then uh, click on pricing here and that'll scroll down to the pricing window. All right, so uh, there's there's two different versions of Bookmap. There's the basic and there's the advanced. Okay, the um, uh, you can see the price here. They are billed quarterly, so please note that. Uh, and the difference between the two uh, are primarily all of these uh, add-ons and uh, the ability to trade right from the Bookmap chart, and that's significant. Uh, because we are displaying liquidity, and uh, you can uh, manage your uh, your orders uh, a lot more precisely because uh, you can you can hide it behind liquidity with your stop losses, or you can front run uh, high liquidity with uh, some of your targets. All right, so trying to just get that uh, advantage of uh, a tick or two uh, to uh, give you a higher probability uh, trade. Okay. All right, and for both of them, uh, you get a 14-day trial period. So uh, sign up, give it a try, see if you like it, uh, and um, uh, take it from there. All right, so there are uh, uh, these other packages here. It's the same Bookmap Basic and the same Bookmap Advanced. Uh, it's just packaged with the DX feed. And the DX feed is um, uh, a data feed for U.S. equities. Okay, we are not a data provider. Uh, but the, um, uh, we've partnered with uh, DX Feed to offer you uh, NASDAQ Total View, okay, and, and Last Trade. Uh, so uh, you can access uh, equities. And I'll show some of the equities, or let me know uh, uh, if you want to take a look at uh, specific equities, and, uh, and we can do so. All right, so um, the data feed uh, with DX Feed, I believe it's about 50 bucks. So, uh, and there's nothing we can do about that. You will be charged uh, if, um, I mean, you do get a 14 day trial period with it, but it's for delayed data. So um, uh, if you wanna look at live data, uh, then you will need to pay, pay for the, uh, the data feed, okay? And uh, that's uh, the only differences here uh, with the two. Uh, you can still get uh, the book map um, or the DX feed with book map advanced or basic on its own without the package. Okay, so you can just sign up and you can you can just add that as an add-on uh, with either of these versions here. Okay, so that's how it works. Uh, and um, uh, give it a shot and see if it's uh, something that helps you. Uh, and um, then uh, the education tab. Once you once you become you come into the portal here uh, and come into the education tab. Ah, this is I have an old cached version here. Um, so uh, anyway, uh, let me show you where you can find uh, all the educational videos here. Let's go to the channel. Uh, and uh, here's our channel here. And uh, the latest uploads are here. Uh, and then uh, you can click on the playlists. Okay. And uh, there's all sorts of uh, uh, playlists here. So uh, you can um, uh, record. Uh, I'm sorry, the recorded webinars, they are all here. So you can, you can click on that. Uh, and you can access them all here. Okay, this one will be uploaded today as well. Uh, and then uh, I want to also point out the new course, uh, education course we put together. So you can click on this link here. Uh, and it's a four-part series. Okay, so uh, they're about an hour each. And uh, they go through um, uh, some of the basics in Bookmap, but then they start to get into much more advanced concepts rather quickly. Uh, and... Um, uh, and also some strategies that uh, some basic strategies, uh, nothing uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, mind mind bending here, uh, but uh, how uh, you get this advantage uh, by looking at uh, 
the data within Bookmap, and um, and then applying these strategies, and then the Bookmap uh, advanced one is part four, where you can um, uh, add the correlations and uh, the correlation tracker and some of the uh, iceberg detectors, uh, etc., uh, and put it uh, all together in a kind of a cohesive package. All right. Uh, so uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can follow us on Twitter and you're going to get the most uh, updated uh, information here. So you can see our last um, uh, tweet here uh, is a review. Okay, let me uh, open this in a new tab uh, of uh, some of the educational uh, material. Okay, this is from uh, part uh, three. All right, and going over a setup here uh, and understanding uh, what to look for, why, how the liquidity plays a part in this, uh, where to place your stop, uh, et cetera. Okay, so uh, good stuff there. Uh, check it out uh, and see if it's helpful for you. Uh, let's jump in and take a look at Bookmap. Okay, and uh, we've, you know we've got some new traders in here, so um, I want to, and I have been uh, for the last few sessions going over just the. Uh, uh, the basics here in Bookmap, and I think it's been really helpful for you guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cover that again uh, today, and it's um, uh, just showing you the um, uh, starting off with a uh, a regular chart, okay, and uh, then we add in. Uh, whoops, I can turn on that, and then we add in more information here, okay, and I also had some pending orders here that I canceled so we can hide those. Okay, so here we're just looking at a candlestick chart. Okay, this is a 15-minute uh, chart, uh, and, um, and we can see the, uh, you know, what the candlestick displays. Uh, open, high, low, close for that 15-minute period. Okay, we also have a subchart here, a volume, and most of us are very familiar with this view. Uh, of a chart. Uh, however, there's there's a problem here, a big a big problem. Uh, not just one; there are several. Uh, it's very limited. Uh, we're not we're not viewing uh, so much more information and data that is pertinent uh, to making informed trading decisions. Uh, instead of reading candlestick charts, uh, you know, reading like a uh, I don't know a, a, an engulfing candle here uh, or you know whatever it might be. I mean. It gives you some insight, but and then it's just a shot in the dark from there. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, volume helps uh, clearly, uh, but, you know, you don't understand where the volume traded. Uh, you don't understand uh, how much traded. Uh, you don't understand what type it was, what kind of aggressor it was. Was it a sell or a buy? And I, I'm talking about market orders. Uh, and um, all of that detail is is uh, um, not displayed here. Okay, that's going to give you quite an advantage by understanding that. Those of you who are looking at uh, footprint charts, uh, you understand this. Okay, or a lot of you also follow uh, volume profile. Uh, but um, the uh, are, are just uh, if I can get a show of hands in here, uh, if you guys can uh, just type uh, yes or something in the in the um, um, in the questions there, uh, are, are there any uh, volume profile traders uh, out there? Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Um, what about uh, footprint uh, charts? Anyone? Anyone looking at uh, some footprint charts? Huh. Okay. Interesting. I'm getting uh, some no's on this. I, I was uh, I had expectations that um, uh, you guys would be looking at uh, at, at some of these things. Yeah, there's a few. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Well, footprint chart is great. I mean, uh, it, it'll show you the um, uh, the the aggressor, uh, and it'll it'll show you where it traded. Uh, but uh, it 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 doesn't um, go into some of the details. So. I'll address that in just a minute here. But just, let's just turn on the volume dots in Bookmap, okay? Uh, and uh, now uh, I, I can see where the volume uh, is actually uh, trading here. Uh, and uh, let me adjust the dot size here and go back to restore. Okay, that might be a little, that's not bad. Okay, okay. 
so now uh, we can see exactly where the majority of the volume traded. Uh, we have so much more insight now. Uh, this last 15 minute period here uh, from uh, 1030 to um, uh, 1045, uh, this down candle, we know where, where the traders uh, traded, where the transactions took place. Uh, this is essential. Uh, and um, uh, to uh, start to piece this together, okay, we see the cluster of, in, of volume here in the, uh, in the sub chart. And that's good, but we don't know where it took place. Look, look at the location here. The majority of this trading took place at the low here. Okay? That's giving us a lot more insight to what's going on. All right? And we can see the, uh, the overall uh, shape of it. Uh, we're more buyers or sellers. And we can see it's rather equal. Uh, it's almost 50% here. All right? So some of these traders are going to be trapped. Uh, other other traders here, they're they're actually uh, this is where they they thought it was a deal, and they're they're jumping in and and uh, starting to uh, to purchase. Okay, so uh, just this alone uh, is uh, uh, giving us a, a lot more insight, and and we can also see the uh, the size. Uh, so and the size here is by reference. Uh, you know, bigger dot is more volume. If you want the exact uh, number, well, you can click on the uh, tool tip here. And you can hover over some of these dots, and uh, you get um, the uh, uh, ah. There's a new a new data type here. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is great. Um, the um, uh, let's see here. So we we you can see here that we have the date, the um, the time, uh, what was on the ask at that price level, uh, and the volume that traded here. So a lot traded here. Uh, you know, we're showing 25,000 uh, contracts that traded here. All right. So this is a big switch. Uh, and, um, and now we have insight to, uh, to the volume and, and the transactions here. All right. So now that's just the, uh, the, traded, the traded volume. Uh, I also uh, kind of skipped this one. I want to add uh, beforehand here the uh, best bid and, uh, and ask. All right. So, uh, in Bookmap, uh, we have uh, we don't really. Uh, uh, I mean, you can have the candlesticks on here if you're a candlestick trader, uh, and look at the patterns with all of the volume and the uh, historical uh, best bid and offer. But that's what we're showing here. Okay, it's the historical best bid and offer, and uh, the red is the uh, best offer, and the uh, green is the best bid, and it's here in the current market window with these dashed lines. Okay, on this current price ladder here. Right. So, uh, uh, and and this alone, compared to candlestick chart, is giving us uh, some nice insight. Uh, you know, because look at look at how the um, this 15 minute period here, how the market came down, paused for a little bit, uh, and then really sold off hard. Okay, and that data is not in this candle. All right. So that just alone is is helpful. Uh, but we start to add on these other layers of information. We put the volume dots on here. Now we have much, much clearer insight uh, to uh, to what occurred within this 15-minute period. Okay, uh, and um, I wanted to uh, uh, zoom in here and let's take a look at this big dot down here. Okay, so you can just click on the hand tool and we can zoom right in. Uh, and now we can see really uh, how this unfolded here. All right. So um, uh, in fact, there was a lot of buying down down in this area here. Uh, they started to uh, they started to accumulate uh, down in this area, but look at the selling, massive selling coming down into that area. Okay, uh, and um, uh, and then uh, and then you can see the um, uh, we just kind of go sideways here for a bit, uh, and then down here uh, you, you can see that uh, uh, a small small selling, right? Uh, com these dots compared to some of the other larger dots. This is where we see a flip. Okay. Uh, all, all of this aggressive buying is pulling the market upwards. All right, so uh, a lot more insight to uh, uh, to what's going on at this area, uh, and uh, and you can continue to zoom in here. Okay, so let's just do that and uh, let's take a look here. Okay, so uh, now I'm down at uh, uh, millisecond level, uh, and I can see exactly what unfolded here. All right, uh, I can see the aggressive market buys here with the green dot. Uh, the aggressive market sells with the red dot. 
Okay. Now, why would you uh, want this millisecond data? Well, this is like a, a horizontal time in sales, basically. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're showing and recording every single transaction that took place. But as you start to zoom out, we are, um, uh, as you can see, like uh, we, we uh, consolidate or uh, aggregate just graphically this data. And we give it in the overall pie shape. So that's what the pie shape, uh, why, why this uh, shows up here. Okay? Because there are so many transactions that took place here that uh, it, it's needed uh, to, uh, to give an overall understanding of what happened. All right. Okay. So um, now, um, yeah, yeah, right, right here. There's just there's uh, uh, no 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 traders here at all. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know Francisco's pointing that out. Uh, there's nothing. No one wanted to transact here. Okay. We can see that the, these dots uh, get smaller and smaller, and they're selling here at this level. Uh, no question. Right. But, um, uh, you know, and, and it's not bad. I mean, uh, you know, 2,064 uh, contracts traded here uh, on the uh, at this uh, 48 level. Uh, but then one tick lower, none. Absolutely none. OK, the uh, uh, the sellers are exhausted. OK, and that's when exactly when you see these buyers uh, lift the offer aggressively. OK, very aggressively. Okay. And we even get a retest back to this area here, and there's no sellers. Okay, none. All right, so uh, a great, great, uh, great insight here, uh, and understanding, uh, you know, how, how these markets uh, really behave, and and all of that here compared to that candlestick chart, I mean, it's like another world, uh, and um, uh, really starting to understand what transacted, uh, where, and um, how much, uh, and then when we see the flip here, all right? Okay, so uh, that should about do it for the volume. Let's turn on the uh, the heat map now, okay? Because, um, well, before I do that, um, it, the the issue here that I, I had mentioned about the footprint chart, okay? Um, it's similar to this candlestick. Okay, those who, those of you who, uh, uh, and there's a few of you guys in here, look at that footprint chart. Uh, you know, you won't see this. Uh, I mean, you might you, actually, you you probably will because this is a little more higher time frame. Uh, but um, uh, you know, you're you're not gonna you you the exhaustion down here, uh, and starting to understand how it's dwindling. Uh, and starting to put this together, this data is going to be lost in a footprint chart. And why is that? Uh, it's because it's aggregated. Uh, it's based on either time or a bar rotation, usually, uh, and um, uh, or volume or you know something else. Uh, and uh, uh, that aggregation uh, dilutes the data. Okay, so uh, you're not going to be able to understand that it really started to dwindle off here, and then we get our exhaustion, and then they really, uh, they you know, start to hit the hit the bid here or lift the offer. I'm sorry. All right, uh, and, uh, and and then that's an advantage. Uh, so we're we're not um, you know time based. We're just and we're not event based or tick based. It's it's just basically you can just continue. It's like basically unlimited zoom. Uh, and you can continue to zoom in. Uh, you know, I mean, down, we're down at uh, you know millisecond level here. Uh, we can, can continue to zoom in, right? Uh, and and see uh, exactly what unfolded here, right? As you can see, the decimal points here they just get bigger and bigger. Right? Okay. So uh, that's uh, what Bookmap is showing you with the with the volume, and that's how that solves that that issue. Uh, of uh, the lack of transparency with it, with the volume, and the the problem that uh, is presented there. So let's turn on the heat map. Okay. So the heat map. Uh, this is uh, all these uh, striations that you see in in, in um, uh, white and uh, gray lines here. Uh, what this is showing you uh, is where traders are lined up to trade. Okay. So. Uh, that's another uh, distinction here between us and other products. Like uh, you, you can uh, you can look at a dome 
uh, and that's good. Let's go back. Let's look at the current market. And you can look at a dome here, and you see the liquidity here uh, in um, uh, on the on the offer and then on the bid. Okay. And we see all the contracts here that are available at these price levels. Okay. This is the current market. Right. Uh, these are our traders willing to provide liquidity here. Now that's where they want to trade. Now this is constantly changing. Uh, you know, uh, traders will uh, uh, shift that uh, liquidity and that uh, uh, desire to buy or sell at these levels. And that's when you see these numbers change. All right. Now, that that's an advantage, uh, you know, to understand and target high areas of liquidity because the market is searching for liquidity. Okay. It needs liquidity to trade. Without liquidity, uh, you know, it just, uh, it just nothing, nothing really occurs. Okay, so um, uh, you can start to target some of these areas. Look at the 1369 contracts here at 55. Okay, uh, and um, uh, that's about all that really would would kind of stand out here for you, uh, with uh, just looking at the dome. All right, but uh, if uh, if you look here uh, at the heat map, uh, we've taken this data here, and in this window, this is the current market window. Uh, we've um, a given a graphical representation. So our 1377 now uh, is um, a given a, a you know a, a, it's it's much brighter. Okay, and then you can see the highest now is up here, uh, 1430. Okay, so that's what the heat map is showing you. It's just a graphical representation of the book, All right? But we can see some subtleties here. Uh, that would be uh, a little more difficult to uh, to read here uh, in a um, in a dome. Okay, we can see uh, down down here on the um, I mean, very quickly because the the reference is uh, is graphical. So we know there's pretty high liquidity down here, and they're now starting to join in down here at this 51 and a half area. All right. So the um, uh, where this really gets interesting here is not that it's just the graphical representation of it. It's then transposed onto the chart historically. Okay, so that dome and that uh, this information is not recorded in a dome. Okay, you're not gonna you're not gonna see it recorded and plotted onto the chart. So uh, that's that's a problem, uh, and it and you can see that uh, a book map solves that problem by plotting it here. So now we have an understanding of the uh, uh, the auction. Okay, where buyers and sellers were really uh, involved here uh, in the market, uh, and we can see it, and we can also see how they're behaving. Okay, you can see that uh, in this area here, uh, you know, it got really bright as price came down. They started a pull. Okay, they pulled right at this last second here, one tick away, uh, and then um, uh, they started to pull uh, yet again here at this same same price level of uh, 51.75. Uh, and where are they where are they going? They're adding actually a one price level lower. So this is um, you know it's not it's not really showing the intent to buy here. Uh, although it is high liquidity, I mean they're 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 uh, kind of easing out of it. Uh, they're not so keen to buy. If they were really keen to buy, they would chase it, uh, and you would see them add um, uh, liquidity at higher levels. Okay. Uh, and uh, that would be the short-term liquidity. And you can see, actually, uh, there's a, a couple different types of liquidity that we're looking at here. Okay. We have longer-term liquidity that stays in the book. Okay. And uh, uh, that's uh, some of these levels here. They, they, you, you can see that they've been here for a long time. Okay. At this 55 level or 56, they actually pulled for a bit, but they're back in. Okay. And you can see down here, uh, they were interested at, at this level as well, uh, down at, uh, uh, you know, about 48 and a half or 40, 48 three quarters. All right. So, um, uh, now, now we, now we can, we can start to gauge some of these larger players who really want to deal at some of these levels. All right. So let me zoom in back here. So this is kind of medium term liquidity here, but look at, and, and, you know, uh, they have somewhat of an intent to trade here, and we can gauge it just by looking at their behavior. Okay. But then look at uh, them here with this really high liquidity here and all of these little areas here. 
uh, and um, uh, they don't they do not have intent to trade okay they're pulling these orders okay very high liquidity okay we can see that uh, 1400 contracts here okay one tick lower another well 1500 contracts uh, they're they're adding and pulling but they they um, they're, they're in here for a short period and look at how they pull Okay, we can zoom in here and we, we, we can see the behavior. Okay, actually, a few traded here, uh, and then they pulled. Which is, this is unique. Actually, they usually pull before anything trades in there. Uh, but uh, the, the point here is, uh, so did they really have intent to trade? Uh, and the answer in, in uh, well, these, these little orders here kind of throw, throw that uh, for a loop, but uh, they, they, in general, they did not, okay? Very short-term liquidity versus this higher long-term liquidity that wants to trade or is showing more interest to trade. And these guys here, it just looks like they're skewing the auction, uh, trying to press price down into uh, maybe some of that longer-term liquidity here, okay? And this is called spoofing, okay? Trying to skew the auction with high liquidity uh, and uh, and press it into another area uh, that is uh, is lower. Okay, this is an example of it, and uh, you know this is uh, this disruptive uh, practice is uh, is illegal. All right, so uh, we don't really know uh, if all these accounts are matched and if if that's exactly what they're doing. However, uh, ju just judged by this uh, behavior here. Uh, you know, we're getting a lot more insight uh, to this price level. Okay. Okay, so uh, we can get more into, let me know if you have any questions about that longer term liquidity that stays in the book. Uh, and they stay because it's, it's a FIFO market, first in, first out. They'll give up their place in line if they jump out of the market. All right. So um, anyway, look at uh, look at this area here. So these guys jump back in, uh, and they start to see, uh, it, you know, they stayed here. All right. So uh, uh, they're starting to now they're more intent than they were back here. All right, and we can see that. Uh, uh, well, you know, the candlestick is for this period here, but uh, uh, they're starting to jump back in and showing interest at these levels. All right. Let me take this candlestick back off. Okay. All right. Any questions? Does anyone have a question on uh, the um, uh, that li li liquidity here? Uh, the di the distinction between the two. Okay, it's an important concept, and and we can cover that uh, very simply uh, by just using auction theory as, as an example. Okay. So. Uh, the example would be that uh, uh, these uh, these traders, uh, uh, you know, if you show up to the uh, uh, the, the farmers market, uh, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, it gets really impacted, uh, and a lot more uh, uh, customers and buyers they want to buy uh, start to show up in an area. Okay. Well, if if there are more buyers all of a sudden, well, you know, price, uh, uh, you can see that uh, it reacts to it okay? and that shorter term uh, liquidity. And this was kind of medium term as we as we talked about. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, and then up here was that longer term liquidity. And uh, we went right into that area and, and a bit beyond it. Okay. So uh, more buyers, uh, you know, price reacts to it uh, with um, I mean, there's, there's more demand. It's as simple as that. Okay, it's the same on the other side. Uh, if uh, all of a sudden uh, uh, not more uh, customers come to that farmer market, uh, but more uh, more vendors come in with uh, with more vegetables, uh, well then uh, then you can see that uh, uh, there's more supply, uh, and, uh, and and price will react to that. And it's an immediate imbalance uh, in that supply and demand uh, that. Um, uh, causes uh, these fluctuations like this. Okay. All right. Okay. So anyway, let me know um, uh, if you have any questions on this. Uh, we've been going over it in, in detail here, and I think it's been really helpful for you guys. Uh, but uh, 
let's uh, let's move on here and um, and take a look at um, some uh, some other things. Uh, just uh, uh, understanding um, and, and getting this complete view of, as you can see now, I mean, we're worlds away from that candlestick chart. You, you Now you're starting to understand a lot more of what's going on here. Uh, in fact, uh, let me bring down this white cutoff a little bit, bring it up, uh, because uh, I'm looking for some of these larger players. And, okay. Yeah, so you can see that longer term liquidity and you can see that shorter term liquidity here pressing market back and forth. Here, uh, down here, it actually what they were taken on. Okay, but look in some of these little areas here and also in here, right? And that's just how it works. Uh, you're gonna see it again and again, right? So we can make a distinction here by their behavior uh, for the most part, uh, if they mean uh, to trade or not. Uh, their intent to trade at these levels. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at um, uh, as you can see the S and P is coming up to that 56 level up here, uh, and um, uh, that's probably going to take out any of those uh, uh, sellers that were down in these areas here. Uh, and there you go. I mean, there's your uh, you know going up into that longer term liquidity up in these areas here. Okay. All right, a little bit of a flip of the book here. Uh, you can see not not the not the cleanest or clearest, uh, but uh, longer term liquidity here on the uh, on the offer, and now flips over to the bid. Um, Francisco, the flip the flip of the book is done with. Um, uh, well, it depends. I mean, uh, no, for the most part, it's longer term liquidity. Uh, you, you know, that's usually what, uh, uh, you know, they put a cap on price, okay? So uh, when you break out to a new price level, uh, you know, it, it, it flips. Like uh, it flips from, uh, you know, supply up here to demand on the other side. And price will now, uh, it has a higher probability of accepting up in that new range, right? Uh, and then, uh, you know, you'll see like, uh, you know, these areas just get built out sometimes. It's it's amazing uh, to see levels of liquidity here. They really mean to trade. So they're, they're, they want to be in uh, and they're looking for pullbacks uh, so they can get a cheap price uh, for the instrument. OK. And a lot of times you'll be lucky if uh, if they trade or, or not. Um, oh, they'll be lucky if they trade or not, because uh, price will, you know, usually doesn't go back to that area. OK. So look at look at these guys right now. So we're testing that high high liquidity here that flipped, all right? We're, and not not getting a lot of clarity here. Uh, you know, I mean, look at the breakout here it was uh, not very. Uh, uh, it was only uh, about a point and a half or or so, maybe two points. Uh, and um, and we're coming right back now to where we broke from. So the new trading range is uh, right right where we're testing right now at this like 54 and a half, and uh, they're down here a tick tick lower all right and they're starting to pull now okay so this 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 flip here uh, is showing the intent is uh, uh, not as uh, they're just not as interested you know so we have the potential now uh, if the if a lot of sellers jump in okay we might actually get a lot of sellers uh, with limit orders on the offer with high liquidity and you might see them uh, hit the bid really hard with aggressive market orders and then we'll charge down to find high liquidity at other areas. Okay, so that high liquidity acts as a magnet for price. Okay, that shorter term high liquidity uh, repels price uh, because there's a skew in the auction and the supply and the demand. Okay, the market has already digested uh, and understands these higher areas of liquidity. Okay, and that is the market. All right. Okay, the uh, icebergs here, let's uh, turn on the indicators. Uh, and, uh, and now we can see uh, iceberg orders uh, within this as well. And this is a, a, a book map add-on. Uh, and uh, what this number, for example, this 421, uh, what this uh, uh, signifies uh, at this price level here, uh, the, um, 
there were 421 contracts that traded that were not shown in the limit order book at that time. Okay, so let's actually just zoom into that area. Okay, and you can see that I'm splitting apart again, like just like the dots, uh, some of these areas here to, to understand, um, uh, you know, what uh, what unfolded here. All right, so here's 214. Okay, now as I continue to zoom in, this is going to be broken up, and you can see all of the details. Okay, of really what unfolded here. So pretty pretty interesting stuff. So uh, let's uh, let's go back, uh, and. Um, Okay, so uh, I have 298 contracts here uh, at um, uh, this 53 and three quarters. Okay, and 280 have traded, and you can see that here uh, in uh, the uh, volume column. Okay, and as I go forward, uh, I'm still showing here 298 in the book. Okay, but volume just traded. Now we're up to 341. Okay, so let me go over that again. Okay, 298 here on the best bid, and uh, 280 here uh, in uh, in the volume column. Okay, and uh, and and now we, we jump up here. Uh, this is a good example because uh, it it adds up perfectly. Uh, you know, add your uh, 43 to. Um, Add your 43 to um, the. Um, oh, hold on just a minute here. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, to that uh, uh, 298, and uh, and you can see that that equals 341. So what this iceberg indicator uh, does uh, is uh, it takes these um, uh, uh, the volume that traded here. Okay. Uh, and and it sees the liquidity and it reads it and it'll make the difference between the two. So we're still at 298, but 43 just traded, okay? And uh, and that that difference is is captured here in this red number, uh, in this column here, uh, but it's also captured here with the uh, this green number that's uh, d down below uh, the uh, the best bid, okay? And you can see that this iceberg is uh, it continues to uh, to trade, okay? So uh, they're they're just sitting here uh, and replenishing, okay. And that's your iceberg uh, your iceberg order, okay. So all together, uh, as we zoom out, now we've consolidated it here or aggregated it into 214. You see the uh, the distinction here that uh, you can zoom in and you can see every single little detail, all right. Okay, and you see several down here, okay. And this is really insightful. All right, because um, where did we break from uh, in this little microstructure here? Uh, we broke from this price level here okay, at, uh, at 43 and, uh, and a half. And, uh, and you can see that uh, there's not high liquidity here, but there is liquidity uh, with that uh, iceberg detector. Okay. They're getting filled here with, with uh, pretty, pretty high orders. Uh, compared to the you know the rest of the chart here, uh, and uh, and and they they want to be long, okay, without showing in the book, so they don't skew the auction with their short term uh, liquidity, okay, so they're hiding it, and you can see the reaction, right? Uh, you can see that uh, we had a nice move to the upside. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, pressing, uh, pressing the orders here. Um, so, um, all right, let's uh, let's take a look here at the correlation tracker. So, uh, I want to go over uh, oil, okay? Because this is another add-on now. Uh, we understand what bookmap is showing, uh, but let's take a look at the um, uh, correlation tracker here, okay? Uh, and um, uh, let me show you where it is first. Uh, click on uh, the um, studies configuration, uh, and then click on correlation tracker here. Okay, enable it here. Okay, in this window, uh, and then in this part here, enable it for uh, for oil uh, as well. Okay, and there's some uh, different settings here. You can view it from the left of the chart, or you can have it reset for a particular amount of time. Uh, I've got it set to the left of the chart. 
and uh, and and then just add your correlation here. Okay. So let me remove this one for now, and then we'll just click on Add, and then you choose your symbol. And I'm going to choose um, uh, the CAD. Okay. Okay. So now we have plotted on the chart from the left here in relationship to oil, uh, the CAD. Okay. The dollar CAD. And now we can understand like how oil uh, is related to it. This is a, a classic uh, uh, or, you know, CAD yen, but you can't do that with futures. Um, the, the, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, can Canadian dollar uh, is uh, oil rich, so uh, price of oil will affect uh, the Canadian dollar. Uh, and um, uh, so we're, now we're starting to understand uh, uh, how these markets are behaving, and you, you're looking for uh, discrepancies in the behavior, uh, and you're looking for opportunities uh, based on the correlation uh, to um, uh, make a trading decision. Okay. But uh, before before any of that, uh, look and understand uh, what's going on in the heat map, and the auction, and the traded volume. Okay, the more that you understand this, then look and see if the correlation is holding true. All right, uh, and in this case here, uh, you know we're uh, we're seeing the CAD starting to go up. Okay. And uh, and oil is too, so we're we're more or less in line here. So I'm not really seeing much of a um, a distinction. All right, or you know I have the CAD dollar uh, here as well, and um, we can uh, we can also look at <coughs> the uh, a correlation here with oil. Okay, so I, I I plotted it here on the chart. Okay, the same process as just going through here. Uh, correlation tracker, enabling it, and then adding it here. All right. Now I'm going to have to kind of zoom vertically here. Just uh, left click and hold and drag in a, in a column, uh, and you can uh, start to, to zoom vertically. Okay. Or just zoom in a little bit, and then that correlation is going to plot here because it's always plotting from the left of the chart. Okay. Uh, and uh, what, what do we see here? What kind of advantages? Okay. Well, uh, you know, we, we can see that oil did its double bottom down here, uh, and um, oh, I'm sorry, it did a double bottom down here or triple, and then uh, and then you see the retest here, and then it's gone to the upside. Okay, what about that Canadian dollar? Well, uh, you know, you can see that um, uh, this is this is lagging here. Uh, you know, as price is uh, uh, going down and then reverses in oil, it takes a while here. Okay, for CAD to do that. So in this area here, uh, this is this is an advantage. Okay, looking at CAD. Okay, so you know uh, uh, we want to let's zoom into that area. Okay, and let me zoom vertically as well. Okay. So uh, we, we what's what's occurring down here? Right. Well, you know we still we see kind of uh, buying and selling back and forth. Uh, and we come into an area of high liquidity, okay, and they pull, right? But then they start to um, uh, lift the offer here with some of that uh, aggressive buying, okay? Uh, and, um, uh, and we also know that at this point here that uh, the, the uh, oil is going up. It's, it's already been going up. So, uh, you know, if uh, – and you see that CAD is uh, starting to bottom out. Well, let's look at some of the microstructure here to give us that advantage. Okay. So uh, first thing I'll do uh, is we can create a trend line, uh, and I can also create a horizontal line here. Okay. And uh, that structure, it, it breaks in this area here. Okay. So at this point here, uh, you've got oil on your side. Uh, you can see the structure is broken in CAD, uh, and um, uh, maybe you want to consider uh, starting to uh, uh, enter in some of these areas. Okay. And let's, how would that worked out for you? Well, it would have worked out great, you know, based on that correlation. Okay. In fact, you can see that uh, uh, not only did we um, uh, come back up to this area where we dropped from originally, we've actually tested the other side here of this high. Okay. All right. 
let's see here. A question or a, a comment here. Uh, 11 a.m. divergence. Yeah, I mean, you can see how the CAD just continues to uh, kind of grind uh, until here. Uh, oil's dropping, uh, and it has been dropping, uh, but uh, wh where does CAD go? It's, it's just fascinating stuff, right to the high liquidity here in trades, and then it drops. So same thing. Look at that microstructure. Okay? Now you can draw a line here and then also up in this area here, uh, and looking for that break, uh, and then... Um, uh, you've got again. You've got the uh, CAD. Um, I'm sorry, the oil on your side, uh, and then um, you are uh, uh, looking for uh, the continuation, like uh, like oil is. Uh, Daryl, the uh, yeah, the correlation tracker is an add-on uh, as part of the advanced subscription. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Francisco, you you could you could trade it either way. Um, you know, uh, look uh, look for advantages on on either or. Uh, uh, yeah, I know, I know you know. Um, but um, uh, the uh, uh, the CAD was actually uh, kind of uh, lagging uh, from what I see right now. So uh, I'm not getting too much insight um, on the uh, on on the CAD. Um, well, let's take a look here uh, at this uh, 11 o'clock. Okay, uh, how did that look? Let me zoom out a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so here's uh, 11 a.m. All right, and um, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, here, well, it took a while. I mean, uh, you know, uh, again, CAD was uh, was bottoming out here, uh, and uh, oil was already up. Okay, and we do get a pullback here to where we broke from in CAD, uh, and then that continuation uh, to the upside. Yeah, I mean. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like it the other way around, uh, to be honest. Um, 11.15, okay. Yeah, yeah, here here would be nice. Uh, no question, uh, you know. So you're looking for oil uh, pulling back here uh, to um, uh, where it broke from in this, this area here. Uh, and then um, uh, you're looking at CAD uh, as well. And, uh, and you can see that CAD is, um, ah, Eh, it's it's a little bit better, but uh, I'm still having some uh, uh, some problems reading it this way. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, there's a distinction between the two. I mean, uh, uh, th this has moved more than CAD has. Okay, so uh, looking for it to kind of revert back to its relationship, and that that's that's what the correlation is all about, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, not too highly correlated markets, but uh, uh, correlated where there something uh, is makes a distinct difference uh, in the in the pricing, and that and that discrepancy is what you want to take advantage of. All right. Okay. All right, any questions on the correlation tracker? Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. So. You can see that um, uh, by uh, just starting to piece these all together, okay, we have uh, the traded volume and, and reading that, right, uh, and, uh, and and where it took place, how much, what type, uh, and then we're looking at the heat map, which shows us the same information, but in the auction. Okay, and that is unique. Uh, there are a few other products uh, out there, uh, but um, uh, this is this is new information and new data for the most part. 
Uh, and we can read that auction now like a, like a champ. And uh, we can see, look at oil here. This is what I'm talking about is they want to buy. This is exactly it. Okay, look how the price is coming down, and they're adding in at higher levels, and they didn't—they didn't get—they didn't, get, didn't even get tested here. Okay, so they're—they're uh, they're willing to buy here at this level, and and uh, and and look at that distinction. You're—you're you're not going to see that uh, in the traded volume. It's simply not—you—you you just wouldn't know. You'd be oblivious to this. Okay, and in a dome, uh, uh, it would. Uh, uh, it would be uh, uh, there, uh, and then as soon as they're adding and pulling liquidity, it's going to be gone. Okay, it's going to be fleeting, uh, and it's a lot harder to uh, to read that here. Whereas you got the combination here together in Bookmap, right? Now add in a few other uh, correlations here, or I'm sorry, um, confluences. We have iceberg detector showing uh, some icebergs going on down in this area. We have 30 here. Okay, and what was the other one? 145 altogether uh, down here. Okay, so uh, we're starting to put this all together. A lot of intent to buy, iceberg going off. Okay, uh, correlation here uh, didn't didn't really help us. Uh, uh, and um, uh, I guess you could uh, maybe on the on the pullback here, uh, and uh, and then maybe look to um, uh, you know let's zoom, zoom into that area. Yeah, you see, start to see, uh, there's some trading down here. I was looking for exhaustion. All right, and um, uh, the pullback here, but CAD is kind of going flat. Okay, so there's another correlation uh, trade uh, that you, you could have taken. It would be very short term. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, you, you can also, um, uh, you know, enter uh, enter long on the uh, uh, you know, do a pairs trade, right? And uh, uh, enter long on the uh, on oil, and then on the CAD, uh, you can uh, you can short it, okay? And you're looking to capture the difference between the two in that price uh, discrepancy. All right. Okay, guys. Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, what else has been happening here? Okay. CAD CAD is. Uh, I'm sorry. Oil is still showing some weakness here. Uh, you can see the overall trend is still down here. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, but we have we had a lot of interest in this area, so we'll, we're just about to test them to see if they're still interested here or not. All right, and uh, we're going to see it. We're going to see it. Okay, let's go back to the ES and take a look. Okay, and notice here, and rarely do you, rarely do I see this. Uh, the ES is so thick in liquidity. Uh, these striations, why are there every other tick like this? Uh, I mean, these are larger players. Uh, they want to get filled in some of these areas up here. Okay, you see it a lot more in the currencies because it's a thinner market. See these striations, every other tick or every few you know ticks or whatever, but it's equaled out. Uh, and um, uh, you know that's the the longer term players, uh, and uh, uh, they're the ones that uh, you know providing that high liquidity uh, at those areas. So we're understanding their behavior. Uh, look at the CAD coming into high liquidity here. Okay. All right. Well, what's oil look like here? How about their liquidity? Okay. Well, these guys haven't really showed up. Right. Uh, the behavior here previously, we traded through, uh, and then we saw a bounce. Uh, but uh, th they are—they're—they're uh, they're not here any longer. Okay, now now they're starting to show. Okay, but this is short-term liquidity here. Okay, at uh, 185 contracts, 100 contracts below that. Okay, uh, and um, the sellers can take them on. Doesn't mean that just because you're seeing that skew in the auction uh, that it will hold. But most of the time, uh, it will it will affect price, right? Uh, and um, and that repels price away, okay? Uh, but um, uh, let's just watch this for a second here, okay? I'm looking for uh, them to uh, uh, lift the offer with aggressive buying here, okay? Just trying to, I'm, I'm starting to anticipate that. Okay, and uh, we can we can draw a more aggressive trend line right in here. Okay, and also this structure right here. All right, maybe I should just do that really quickly. 
okay, there and there. Okay, and let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm starting to anticipate, and I don't see uh, anything yet in the um, uh, the limit order book, except for there was a little bit of interest here. Okay, longer term liquidity though uh, is down at um, it's down at much lower levels. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, well, the, the, the skew in the book here with uh, the liquidity, you can see that uh, uh, it, 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 you know, it's, it's nothing like the S&P uh, where, uh, and, uh, you know, it looks like these guys are kind of edging out of the, the August contract as well. When you see, see how they're, they're hedging. Uh, and kind of very high liquidity, very close here to the market, right? Uh, in another week or so, this will be all cleared up, right? They'll be done, uh, and the contract will trade uh, uh, without uh, uh, these guys um, uh, rolling over. Okay. Okay, 11.25. Yeah. Some, yeah, this little pullback here was nice uh, as well. All right, guys. Well, uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day. Unless unless you have any questions, uh, happy to uh, to go over them. Uh, you know, starting to integrate that um, uh, the uh, a correlation tracker uh, and um, uh, the iceberg detector, and we haven't even gone over the uh, cumulative volume delta in the sub chart here. Right. But uh, you can see how, uh, you, you know, just, just by looking at, at this data and starting to understand uh, really what's occurring here, because we're giving you a lot of transparency into exactly what's occurring, uh, then you're going to be able to make much more informed uh, decisions on your trading here. Okay. I mean, looking at that candlestick chart, boy, I mean, uh, you know, these are financial decisions uh, and um, uh, there's not much data there. Okay, so uh, uh, anyway, uh, you can give Bookmap a try for that 14-day trial period and uh, see if this is something that uh, is helpful for you. Okay, let's see. Sadeep uh, just signed up for Bookmap. Um, what data feed uh, do I recommend? Uh, well, yeah, you can go to bookmap.com and you can see all of the uh, uh, different data providers. Uh, and... Um, uh, there's a few that are doing something interesting now uh, that uh, you might want to uh, consider, uh, and that is uh, Rhythmic and CQG. Uh, the reason being is um, uh, you can see here in oil, uh, there's a limit uh, to this uh, depth of market in oil. There's 15 on each side, right? It's up to this white line. This is the lit book, okay? Uh, Rhythmic and CQG are showing complete book depth which is uh, really, really cool. Uh, so even these price prices up here, uh, right now they're historical. I'm sorry, prices. The liquidity, the contracts up here, they're, it's going to be 100 at this 46.65 level uh, until uh, we get up here and it refreshes. Right, and then uh, when it refreshes, we'll see if these guys are still here or not. But uh, um, both Rhythmic and CQG at the moment uh, are offering uh, for COMEX and NYMEX uh, unlimited, uh, well, a complete uh, uh, depth of market, okay, all price levels. Are, it's all live, okay? And uh, I think Rhythmic, Rhythmic is also doing it for the S&P at the moment, okay? Uh, let's see. You were in, uh, see, you're in, in interactive brokers. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. And you had CQG in the past. Well, you might want to consider your CQG again uh, to to check this out. Try it out. You know, see what works for you. Yeah, Ninja Ninja Eight is fully supported. Okay, Ninja Seven and Eight. Uh, so. Um, uh, give it, give it a shot, and uh, 
uh, you know, C. I mean, but uh, one thing that, uh, you know, if you're trading on a, on a lower time frame, like looking at, uh, you know, some of these very specific areas like we have been today, uh, then uh, interactive brokers is not going to serve you as well. Okay. The reason being is that uh, they package the data every 500 milliseconds. And that's basically, you know, a blink of an eye is about 200 milliseconds. Okay. So, and that's quite slow in the HFT environment. Okay. But uh, in uh, uh, 500 seconds is, uh, you know, you're, you're really moving slow there. Okay. But uh, that's fine. Uh, if you're zoomed out, uh, you know, quite far, then that, that data is going to be useful for you, okay? Because it's, it's going to be diluted, uh, and uh, or uh, it, it'll give you the uh, it'll be aggregated and it'll give you the insight, okay? But uh, if you're you know really looking uh, into some of these um, uh, smaller levels here, then uh, uh, yeah, I would uh, I would recommend uh, something else. Is Bookmap integrated into the free version of NT? Um, no, no, you will, you will have to um, uh, download and install Bookmap, uh, and there's a process uh, just like uh, any other Ninjicator. You need to add that, and then you add Bookmap as an indicator to a chart, uh, and then Bookmap will show up on its own. Okay? All right, guys. Well, we've been going on for quite a while here, uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's wrap it up, uh, call it a day, and uh, we will uh, do it again tomorrow. All right, uh, here's here's oil uh, starting to. Uh, we, we saw the uh, uh, higher liquidity kind of kind of getting interested down here, and the, we we just broke uh, uh, the structure here, the horizontal uh, structure. We already broke the trend line. Uh, now let's see. Okay, I'm 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 really looking for if they're really interested here. What we're going to see is they're going to lift the offer aggressively here. It's looking pretty good so far, uh, and um, and then you're also going to see. Um, uh, them starting to support it with higher liquidity underneath here, right? Uh, and then where are we going to go? Okay. Well, we can start to target some of that higher liquidity. Okay. And uh, and where do I see it? Well, probably up here. First stop would be, and this makes sense. You know, 46.50, uh, the figure, or half figure, and then uh, and then maybe up here at uh, uh, at 54, 46.54. Right. Ultimately, uh, it would be up in some of these areas, 65 that we were looking at earlier. All right. Uh, am I going to YouTube today? Uh, William, uh, not sure what you mean, but uh, this will be recorded uh, and uh, up on YouTube. OK, yeah, you're welcome. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming and we will catch up with you tomorrow.